I painted a film study every day for a week to see if I get better at art. I've been on a break artistically, mentally, onlineically. And when I picked up a pencil again, I was kind of in the dumps. I was like, what is this? I didn't feel very creative. When I don't feel creative, I do studies because there's nothing to, to think about, head empty, no thoughts. I'm a big proponent for painting film studies. I think it's a great way to get better at coloring, composition, texture, and even stylization. I've been doing these types of studies for many, many years. And as I was looking at some of my older ones, I noticed just how much they are lacking. I don't choose the colors that are actually on screen. I choose more vibrant versions of those colors because I was a very colorful and fun little girl. I would also stylize way too early. Whenever there were backgrounds in pieces, I would do it as quickly as possible because I'm not interested in that. And I always simplified the lighting because I didn't know how to do it. I rushed to the master level of doing studies rather than completing the basics, the fundamentals, if you will. And the fundamentals are this. When doing a study, you want the colors to be as accurate as possible without color picking. Color picking is cheating and you're not gonna learn if you color pick. Instead of focusing on stylizing, I want to focus on color and texture and lighting. So stylization is really like a last thing that you do. It's something after you're very comfortable with completing studies then you could stylize. I don't want to skip out on painting the backgrounds. That's important. I can't rely on just blurring the background and then thinking that no one will notice. And I want the lighting to actually look like the lighting in the original piece. My main goal is to paint well. If you know anything about me, I've been struggling with learning how to paint for the past year. I started with learning how to paint portraits and now I want to paint more compositions and scenes and backgrounds and characters in different lighting situations. I was really inspired by the artist Filippo Mugnai. He's made some really cool movie studies that really focus on the color and the lighting and also simplifying where he can, using some really cool color variations in things that you wouldn't really notice where color variations go if you were to just look at the screenshot of the film. There's so much thought and effort put into these pieces that, that I was using his artwork a lot as references while doing my own studies. It's time to learn, it's time to get started. Study number one. So this is my first warm-up study. It is a scene from Us. I gave myself a limit of 30 minutes just so I can warm up. So I started off with blocking the background because usually the background is something that I really focus on. Also, I chose a piece with a very simple background. That's, that's on making things easy for yourself. I'm just warming up. I'm blocking in the colors, focusing on the color placement. I'm not really focusing on stylization or different textures or different types of brushes. I'm using basically the same brush for the whole thing with some color variations in each stroke because I'm really trying to just focus on the colors. And I also, you know, don't actually do the colors as accurate as I can. I noticed at the end that um, I kind of did a more more saturated version of these colors because that's what I was comfortable with. That's what I did in my previous studies. So in my next piece, I was telling myself, okay, I'm definitely gonna actually focus on the real colors of this piece rather than the colors I think I see, especially without color picking. I want to train my eye to actually get better at perceiving colors more accurately. Study number two. This study is from Django Unchained. I wanted a little bit more complexity in the background. I also realized that I'm like copping out just a little bit by having really centered characters. There's not much interesting composition, but I felt that the colors were interesting, that the background was simple enough for me to give it a shot without, you know, being overwhelmed with going too difficult too early and giving up. The reason I do the background first is because I want the character of the piece to be in the correct context because lighting and color looks different differently if you have a white background versus the actual colors of the background themselves. So I block in the character with the lasso tool and then I start with the thing that I see the most, which is the lighting on the, the rim light on his jacket. I want that to kind of pop. So I, I start with that first. That's what I notice first. All the rest of the colors are very similar in value. So I make sure to flick between black and white all the time to really get the most accurate like color values that I can. I also spent around 30 minutes, maybe 40 minutes on this piece. It was also just a warm up. I didn't focus very much on getting all the shapes right. I'm also tracing right over these screenshots because I'm not worrying about stylization and stuff. I'm gonna just get rid of that step of trying to, you know, make the lines the same. I'm going to just trace over it because I'm focusing on color and texture and lighting. Study number three. 
This was a tough one. This study is from The Witch. I wanted to really focus on a less saturated piece because all of my pieces are really saturated and fun and I wanted to do the exact opposite to challenge myself. Something gloomy with really not a lot of color variation. In this piece, I really wanted to make a lot... <laughs> well, here's the thing. I wanted to make a lot of color variation although there isn't a lot of color variation in her face. You know what I mean? I was looking at this piece from Adrian Bush to see how he makes slight tonal variations in his skin tones, although the piece is very desaturated and I wanted to incorporate that. I tried to do something new and experimental and you know, maybe it wasn't so successful, but I did learn a lot. I was looking very closely at very slight variations, like in the top of her forehead, there's a slightly more desaturated blue zone than on the right of her forehead, which is a little bit warmer. So things like that, looking at really slight variations, maybe under her eyes is a little more purple, but while in the corner of her eyes are slightly more yellow, like looking at the most subtle differences and trying to exaggerate that. I also kind of gave up on this witch piece halfway through, but I was like, you know, you gotta finish it. You gotta do something. You know, you can't just leave it the way it is because I wasn't really happy with it. So I did, you know, everything other than the face fairly quickly just to block in the colors, just to, just to get it over with, just so I don't have an empty piece sitting. Study number four. This study is from The Matrix, and I started by tracing this image like I did for the rest, but then I started to stylize this character just a little bit. I thought, you know, the character was simple enough that if I stylized it, that the lighting scenario wouldn't be much different. So this is my very first stylized piece, and this is one of my favorite pieces. I think that it's really fun. I think that the lighting is really good. Before, I struggled a lot with different, you know, lighting scenarios, especially because there's so much green and orange and whites on her skin complexion. I was worried that I wouldn't be able to figure it out, but I think that it looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. <laughs> Although what I do wish I did is I wish I put more texture in it. I was, you know, focused a little bit too much on the color and the lighting that I didn't think to have brush variations or different types of textures other than that very base texture that I started with. Like on the hands, you could see slight green texture. I wish I did a little bit more of that. The weapon was a lot of fun to paint a lot of fun reflections. I also, you know, don't really work on metals and reflections very much, so this was fun to study it for the kind of like the first time. And the hand was also a struggle, but you know, you 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 do what you can and then you move on. And I think that if you don't look too closely, the hand looks like it's supposed to look like from afar. This study took about an hour to do and I can already see a lot of improvement from the first few pieces. Study number five. Okay, we're moving into Lord of the Rings territory. While I was looking for inspiration and references for studies, I stumbled across from Lord of the Rings studies from my friend Akbar Ibrinov. Ibrimov. His paintings are so energetic, really focusing on, on textures and softs and hard lines, and I was inspired by that to do my own Lord of the Rings pieces, especially because I was struggling a lot to find another like study that I wanted to do. And by setting myself up in more boundaries, then there's less decisions to be made. So I started painting this iconic scene with Gandalf and Frodo. So I focused on matching the colors exactly. And then when I got to the characters, I decided to stylize their heads a little bit because I thought it'd be fun and I felt confident that I could do that. So at this point, I'm starting to realize my process for these paintings is that I start with the local colors of what I see and then I keep changing those colors until it looks exactly like the reference above it. So I keep slightly changing the tone, slightly changing the value or the hue, so then it exactly looks like the local color. I'm looking at my second monitor when it's small, like a thumbnail to kind of get a different perspective than I had by looking at it on my Cintiq. And there I can also see the overall picture, so I'm not getting lost in details or having tunnel vision. After I set down my local colors, then I focus on adding a little bit of texture here and there. Also a little bit of slight color variation, like in the beard, I can see from the original screenshot that maybe it's a little less warm toned near the tips of his beard. So there I started taking the yellow from his beard and I started making a little bit of blues variations there and then above where his beard meets his skin, you know, there's a little bit darker brown color. So then that's where I put that tonal variation as well. So after I did the local colors, the textures, the tonal variations, then I could focus 
on adding some shadows, some highlights, and then finally adding details. I think this one is maybe one of my favorite ones. I say, honestly, I have like three favorite ones, but I think that I'm really happy with this one. It only took an hour to paint, which I thought was pretty quick. I think I'm improving a lot already. And if you squint, it almost looks the exact same as the original. Study number six. So in my last study, you know, I thought it was really good, but a lot of the textures seem very similar. I was using a very similar brush the entire time. So in this piece, um, another one for Lord of the Rings, I really wanted to focus on, you know, there's a simple portrait, but there's a lot of texture in this character's face. So I did this piece in 20 minutes. It was a really quick one. I really wanted to add graphic shapes for some texture on this character and see First of all, how fast I can do it, how I can add textures to the face and still make the colors look exactly the same. So that was my focus on this piece. I didn't stylize it or anything, except, you know, for stylizing the textures. After doing the local colors of the face, doing the base textures of the face, I'm starting to add the main landmarks, which are the eyes and the teeth. And, you know, keeping the layers very simple, not wanting to overcomplicate this. By the end of this piece, I wish that maybe I added a little bit more contrast. Like there are full blacks on his jacket, but I kind of wasn't confident enough to add pitch black and it's slightly lighter in value. And I wish that maybe I could have made the contrast a little bit more. But overall, I think it was very successful as a texture study. I really focused on making lots of gradients and textures in the local color phase, really balancing hard line, hard textures with soft brushes and gradients. Study number seven. This is my final Lord of the Rings piece. I wanted to challenge myself with an environment. All of my pieces have been so portrait heavy, so this was a little bit different for me, a little bit more challenging. Honestly, I don't even remember the last time I painted a layout. <laughs> so while this was definitely out of my comfort zone, I was using the same principles that I had applied to my previous studies, like focusing on local colors and slight variations in hues and values before going in with shading and texture and some lighting. Really wanted the colors to be accurate. I really wanted the textures to be interesting. I wanted a really good contrast between soft textures and hard textures, and I feel like in environments that's really tricky to do for me and I also didn't want to spend more than an hour really doing it because I feel like I get bored easily I feel like if I don't you know have the overall idea done in the first half then I get discouraged because I don't really see the finish line so a main goal was to start by blocking everything out and then I can add details later and refine later so this was a really fun process and I think that the textures are really cool the characters look a little janky but that's neither here nor there I also think that maybe there's a little too many hard textures I wish that I can soften some things here and there but it's all about learning experimenting and I feel like I already learned a lot from this piece study number eight for my last piece, I decided to recreate one of my very first studies that I made many years ago because I know I could do it a lot better and I'm a lot stronger as an artist. So I used this Princess Leia screenshot from Star Wars and I decided to stylize it so then I can put everything that I learned into one piece. But as I started doing this uh, painting, I realized how much I don't wanna be doing it. Um, I was just like not motivated to do it. I was hating the piece. I was bored by the piece and I think it's because either one, I've already done this before even though it was years ago so maybe that's not the truth and two, I was bored of portraits. I've done so many portraits over the past year that this piece was a lot more of just a glam face rather than a study that interested me. And I was thinking, you know, am I doing this for myself or am I doing this for the viewer? So I gave myself a break and I stopped. So scratch study number eight, I only did seven. Seven pieces for seven days. I feel like I had a really steady improvement. I feel like every piece was better than my last. I learned a lot about the process of completing a study, the order in which you place your colors, why color accuracy is so important, why stylization is so important later on in the process. Now I can apply this process to my original artwork. So you let me know, first of all, which one's your favorite piece? Because I think my favorite one is maybe the Matrix one or, or the Shire piece from Lord of the Rings, the last one that I did. And I hope you learned something about, you know, the importance of studies and how it can make you better as an artist. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you next time.